Hello, and welcome to Evolving Enneagram's Interspiritual Podcast. I'm Reverend Yan, founder of Evolving Enneagram, and I am delighted to be in the midst of a Transformation by Type interview series in which I'm interviewing Enneagram professionals, not just about uh, their work primarily, but actually about their personal and spiritual, their inner journeys with the Enneagram. So I am honored and delighted to have a friend and colleague, Fleming Christensen, here today with us. First of all, say hi to Fleming. Hello. Great to have you here. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here in your presence. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. So Fleming uh, you usually doesn't need an introduction, but I'll just share, especially for those in the United States, that Fleming is the CEO of Think About It, based in Denmark, one of the most just like preeminent uh, Enneagram schools in that entire country. And also he's uh, the founder of Enneagram Institute in Denmark and the author, recent author of Why Your Blind Type Matters, among many, many other things that this gentleman does. So again, today, you know, we're not going to focus on his professional work so much as on his inner life. So I want to share just personally that I met Fleming it feels like with, with many of these interviews I've been doing that Cairo, Egypt is like the place. It is like the hub right now. And so that is where the two of us met. We got to enjoy yeah. some great dinners out together, even sharing yeah. food, which which you might hear later is, is a big deal for him. Sharing from his plate is like a big deal. And I grew up, I grew up family style eating, Vietnamese style, you know, practically taking our chopsticks and eating off my brother's plate. So, so we kind of had to do a little negotiation negotiation there, but but it's great, really great to have you here. We had some really powerful conversations over dinner uh, about philosophy and spirituality and such, and I think we, we might be able to touch upon some of that today. But first, I want to invite you to share with us uh, your journey with the Enneagram, like how you met the Enneagram. I know you identify as a type three. I don't know what subtype, actually, so maybe we can kind of go into that as well. So... Fleming. Thank you. Hey. And I and I'd like to um, to uh, think back to the dinner we had in Cairo, uh, where you learned that uh, I'm not so much about sharing, and at another conference conference you learned that I'm not too much about this social thing about partying and dancing, and of course when you confirmed our appointment today and we were writing about what's going on in San Francisco in a moment. You said, perfect, save and dance and a bit of your cake for me <laughs> at the party. So yeah, we have kind of shared, uh, for me, these are important things, but today we will share other important things. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, how should I start? Um, how did I meet the Enneagram? It was um, in uh, 96, I was running a consulting business at the time. I've been self-employed most of my life since age 23 or so. So this is consulting is what I've done most of my life. And I was running this business with uh, 60 consultants. And I was thinking at a time, ah, leadership, ah, how should I do it? I, I, it was the purpose. If people had the purpose inside, then everything would go well. But then suddenly it grew bigger. We need the layers of leadership. So I was going uh, to look for tools that uh, could save me. And I was uh, looking into Myers Briggs, and uh, that was big at the time, and um, things like DISC and. Um, but they did not really solve my problem connecting with purpose. Mm. Uh, it didn't. It didn't kind of talk into um, the longing, the surrendering. Mm. Why are we here? It was kind of more super practical. So I stepped upon the enneagram, and the enneagram was like, "Hello, where have you been on my life?" and at the back of the book uh, that I was reading, 
uh, I could see some teachers are in the States were having part one and part two and part three in workshops. And that was um, Don and Ross. And mm -hmm. I went in 2001 to my first uh, workshop. And it was very special because we had those two very generous uh, teachers sitting at the end of the room and maybe 50 people. And they were speaking nonstop from like eight in the morning to eight in the evening. And they gave us a binder of 500 pages that were copied back in the days where you can smell <laughs> the, the print even if, from the copier machine. And there was something about it that I didn't like because it was not lift. Um, and I see myself as a Zen Buddhist and as a Zen Buddhist, it's, it's all about, did you experience or did you read it? Mm -hmm. If you experienced it, then, then talk about it. If you just read about it, then keep quiet or keep practicing. <laughs> um, but they were talking, teaching, sharing, transmitting from a space like they were looking for something and i wanted to also look for that <laughs> i don't know what they were looking for but they were looking for something mm, in life and and i just wanted to follow them so mm -hmm. since then we uh, worked together and i created the anagram institute of denmark and was kind of supporting their work in, in Denmark. And that, that's how I got, got into it. I wanted to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to connect with something that could, mm, a tool for purpose. I think that's what I called it. And then I ended up with, hey, there's someone who's looking for something that I would like to find too but not knowing what that is. Hmm. So that's the, uh, that's the start. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah, it sounds like a quest for um, purpose in life has been very significant to you. Yeah. And um, along with that, like a lived experience yeah. of, I'd say, you know, maybe meaning of, of meaning. And um, it sounded like you resonated with these particular teachers, Don and Don Riso, for those newer, Don Riso and Russ Hudson, right? Um, and, but not so, like in the spirit of their quest, if you will, what they were questing for. Um, I want to go back a, a step though and, and ask, when you learned your type, what was that experience like for you? Was it like, yes, or, oh, I, no? <laughs> yeah, I had it twice. Because first I found myself relating to type five. Oh. So for many years, I could see the disconnect from the world. And uh, when I was 13, I started maybe now I would call it meditation, but at the time I would just call it focusing or centering. So that practice of observing myself neutrally, um, or mad about books, and especially the original old books when I can find them, and I have the money for it, that's that going deep and and enjoying my solitude. I, 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 it, it looked very much like five. So I was actually teaching at the time, explaining people, this is so five-ish. Hmm. <laughs> Later on, uh, Don, I was visiting him in, in New York at, at the barn. And he said, I think I, think I have to help you. So what he did was he asked me to live and breathe and feel and sense and think and act like 
each of the nine types for one month. Mm. And when we mixed in the instincts, suddenly I saw that I was not sexual five, but self-press three. Wow. And it was embarrassing, like who, being a wannabe five or what, what was going on. And uh, then I had to go back to everybody that I knew and say, hey, I was wrong about myself. Mm -hmm. And it was not that I changed type. It was just that I became more aware. Right. And I like in a way that I had that lesson that we, we can walk around and feel safe in a type because it works for us. And the way that I'm built, if it works, let's keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it worked this five thing it, it worked for me but when i realized that hey it's more it's more type three and i understand that purpose can can be split in ways of doing it it can be hey i do it because i can i can i can do something purposeful uh, I can do my meditations, I can build big businesses, I can be the school in Denmark that introduces the Enneagram to uh, our true professionals, I can do it. So so if I can do it, then go do mm -hmm. that, that's kind of been been. I always said, I never know 100% where I'm going, but what I'm doing, I do 100%. Mm -hmm. So it, it's 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 with a lot of focus. But purpose slash meaning can also be done with um, awareness and presence. Mm -hmm. And then it shifts. It's the same thing. But it, 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 I know that I show up differently in the world when I just do it because I can do it. And I do it because there is a calling in there. It, it's like I'm creating something of value for others together with others. And when I do that, hmm, surrender. Just just don't don't do this normal thing of okay, ignite. <laughs> Go there. Mm -hmm. I can do that anytime I want. Oh, but when I do it with um with a connected heart, it's different. The pace is different. And the way I connect with people would be different. If, if it's just let's do it, I, I take over the responsibility for other people's lives. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, my, my son is, um, is having her post post something from a concussion for two years he's been uh, not well not being healthy not getting balance in his life having difficulties with concentration concentrating and and things so uh, he he lost his job or uh, he he hasn't been social for for two years and when I help him or when I show up for him in the first mode of, okay, let, let me fix this. Um, mm. Then, then I'm just a fixer. Then, then it's like anyone can do it. And I know that we are in the same room, but I'm not connected with him. He's, he, he became an object. But when I feel his pain and sadness and connect with him, and I tell him, I'm your witness. I'm here with you. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can do this together. Not just as your dad, but we, we can do this. Then there is this shift in me. And I have to be careful of, of doing what I do in different modes. Yes. So. The, the other mode is 
Yeah. If we need something done, I'll do it. But uh, is it is it with the connected heart or just because I'm pretty good at doing? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so that that's been a lesson for me. Yeah. Yeah. Very precious, precious journey, you know, and in my experience, you know, in threeness, you know, and I join you in threeness, like it is um, as there is an evolution of consciousness, the pace can slow down. It has permission to like have space within it. You know, and it is like, because I'm conscious of, oh, yeah, as folks listening, and my guess is threes and eights listening, uh, listen at, you know, two times, three times speed, right? This podcast, right? Because there are so many pauses. And yet without the pause, like the heart can't stay with the heart, the mind, the, you know, that functioning goes so quickly that in order to stay with, like there's a diligence in checking in. And make sure I didn't just like quickly move toward, oh, okay, what is, you know, what does the interviewer want from me, right? You know, kind of like, what's the story I want to, you know, and like, can I stay connected even now? You know, that's my journey as well. Like with my heart, as I speak with you. Yeah, yeah. So that's a powerful journey. I want to go back. I mean, for those, it's not a common mistype, I have to say, but I've actually seen it in a few clients of mine, the five and the three, especially when some degree of like scholarly, like erudition was very valued in like the family or environment of origin. And then there's some introversion. And so they're, you know, just kind of something to look at. But there is this piece, as you said, that like you can hide out in a type where it feels safe it's like a comfortable and more often when it's our type there's something about you know a little maybe shame or you know like i'm curious like when yeah, you've true. discovered the three other than just the shame which i actually share because i used to identify as a one and now i'm a three right i did you know that there's a humiliation just in like especially as a teacher right and go going oh crap i was wrong and i'm publicly wrong right so there's an outer affiliation but i'm curious about the inner like what did recognizing that you are three like how did you feel about that mm. um cheating mm. Mm. So just because it was comfortable um, relating to the fiveness and maybe it was the easy move or that worked for me or I think I'm a smart guy. So five, yeah, that, that fits. Um, so like cheating myself. Mm. like um, almost the same feeling that I had when I kind of sort of turned 52. I had this birthday morning where I was thinking, what have I accomplished? Mm. Okay, I built a lot of businesses. I made a lot of money. I wrote, I don't know, at the time, 18 books or something. Uh, my podcast has been downloaded in this little country like or half a million times and you know all those numbers that was kind of yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. accomplishments and i had the feeling that it was worth nothing i've, I've been i've been cheating it was easy to do mm -hmm. it, it it's a project is easy to do if i want to start up things it's just easy to do but because my heart has not been totally connected in all the activities, it's like I I miss myself and everything. And then, then suddenly it hit me that, hello, don't be hard on yourself. All this was preparation. Hmm. Now the real work starts. You need to go out there and fool yourself and look like an idiot and talk about things that you thought you know of. And uh, yeah, that, that's 
that's kind of the ego. The ego want to make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I felt comfortable. But now if I can see it so clearly, I can also move it a little bit aside to see kind of what what's behind. And that nothingness there, it was like going to a gate. And I like to stand there in the gate with all my understanding breakthroughs, ahars, and I wanted to hang out in the gate. I, I had become a smart guy and a accomplished fellow and things like that. But the whole idea is to go through the gate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of into the unknown where you leave everything behind. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the courage until then. And it was not a conscious decision. It was just kind of, hello. This has been preparation. It's good enough. You didn't waste your time. But now surrender. Don't study more to be the best. I always wanted to be the best. If somebody was better than me, I said, ah, thank you. Thank you, because tomorrow I'm better than you. <laughs> and of course, that can create a lot of activities and, and accomplishments. But that was all preparation. So it was like this cheating, the, 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 the sense I've been cheating. It would have been so easy. But the activities made me take the, the next step of fully, fully surrender into something I have no clue about and no words about. But when I, when I go there, I understand this is meaning, this is purpose, this is creating value for, for others with others and this is it. The other thing, just doing the type three style or patterns, I can do that when I, I don't know, have to do activities. I'm starting up an exciting activity here in Denmark, um, a foundation where we uh, give everything I teach uh, about the Enneagram and leadership and teamwork, we give it to young people between 15 and 30 for free. And all the consulting and teaching that I do is kind of supporting that foundation. And if I had all the resources needed, that is what I would do the rest of my life to support the next, next generation, mm. finding ways to speak speak on the bandwidth, the wavelength that they could uh, listen. We are creating young adults that are going out and teaching their friends, young adults. So it's not this 60 year old that has to understand her young adults. No, it's, it's, it's them. So that gift when I'm there, it's like, It's like I'm dead. It's like the ego is dead. It's the, the Mimi is dead. Something else is alive and I have no words for what that is. But there is another. I'm speaking from another place. Mm. But I use all my project capabilities to create resources so I can do this. And so those two kind of use consciously, and that's what I try when they go hand in hand, one supports the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful. What I hear in your journey um, <clears throat> is the, there's a centering of the separate me in the early three journey. I mean, in all our journey in some ways, but like me and then I can, and, and me, at, in the front, right? Like me in the foreground, right? Like what I can do is a strong theme. And then I hear this move 
as you've connected with your heart in your journey into all, actually a spirit of we. What is yeah. this shared life experience? What yeah. can I do in collaboration, right? And for others more, right? And, and even not just we, but it sounds like that move from me in the foreground to places where I can be in the background and others can be in the foreground empowered uh, by your service, if you will. You know, that's that's something I heard in your share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. I want to want to. And, and can I add a little something here? So when when I listen to you, I kind of yeah. say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have a kind of a return back here. I would like to add that. I'm realizing that all my work, and this is the way I end all my workshops, sharing with people that I don't think that we're here for us, kind of us, you now, us here, people listening to us, people that we teach. I don't think we're here for us. I think we're here for the next, next generation. Mm. So what if we could show up in a way for people around us so they could show up for people around them? Mm. So it's, it's the lived wisdom, it's the lived heart, it's the lived, sometimes called spirituality, it's, it is the ability to act on what matters most. Mm. So act. <laughs> like act, <laughs> but also discerning what matters most, what, what, what right. is it? Where do you put your attention? Right, right. And so let's go back because clearly, I mean, okay, there's another thing that you named earlier, which I think is very important. And I'm going to share, of course, this is from my personal perspective that again, we don't leave our Enneagram type, right? This idea that as presence, as we cultivate more presence, the difference is that the type doesn't lead. You know, and, and so the different, but you can use all the skill sets of the type, the aptitude, ap aptitude, your ability, as you shared, to create all these businesses, to 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 um, produce in the world in a way that enables you to fund these more meaningful projects, right? Um, yeah. that that's a, a way of using the type rather than be, on, almost like be used by, right? Whereas before the I can, what I heard earlier is um, this difference between, I mean, uh, when the three is like, well, I can, therefore I should, because I can, and I could probably do it faster than you and better than you, you know, it's that energy, right? And yet I don't realize that that what I can do um, and just buying into what the world needs that I can do takes me out of my heart space. Yeah. Like, right. It just like, because it's not from the inside out. Right. It's, yeah. and, and, and so that move from that into the meaningful work being more at the core and, the, you know, and so that other things serve that, right rather than the other way around, right? So the other things serve that. But I want to say that what I hear from you also is that your vision of what is meaningful transcends generations, that it's not even just about the magnitude of space, but it's about the magnitude of time, that we live for something bigger than ourselves when we live for future generations. That's what I heard. Is that right? That's true. I'm on my next book here, um, <laughs> writing my next. And um, the foundation is a, a, a question, why are we living beyond age 40, 45? We, we, we have kind of created our kids, uh, make sure the next generation of the evolution, the genes have moved on. So why are we built? And for thousands and thousands of years, we know that people could get the aid the age 80. So it's not kind of, 
present time that we can grow old. No, we've done that for a thousand of years. Mm -hmm. And then I read an article about or that it seems like at age 65, we naturally have a longing for giving back to the younger generations. It's kind of embedded in us to go out there and do ego thing to, to, to learn about life, mm -hmm. to be to become wise about life and all the domain of life. But we don't have the wisdom of a whole life lift. But we can get that from people who had a whole life lift. So maybe the design, maybe the DNA is that we need we need this whole process of going out there, explore, build, uh, being entrepreneurs in the in the time we are in, uh, and then borrowing some wisdom for people who have uh, travel longer than us. So when we come in that position, we're kind of holding up uh, a certain level of awareness, consciousness, insights. Um, and I have just returned from Cairo when I uh, completed my teacher training. And the purpose of the teacher training is to find the path of the truth that is for you to teach. And I think we all have our path to learn. I think we are teaching what we have to learn ourselves. But I also think we have a part of the truth. We could all say the part of the truth of the Enneagram mm -hmm. that is ours to transmit. So yeah, I th I think it's it's embedded in us, but I also think that there's something about life that was told around the fireplace thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Now our society is a little more complex. So we have to find ways to share that wisdom about life mm -hmm. in, in a new way. And I think it's up to all of us. I think it's, and I think we do it the way we do it. Yes, yes. I don't think there's one way that it, it has to be done. I think there are many ways this can be done. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it sounds like, again, I want to give a little bit of context for those listening. My understanding is that, you know, uh, Fleming, when you were talking about the teacher training, you're giving the teacher training. You're not taking yeah. the teacher training, yeah. you know, with yeah. Um, yeah. Dr. Halet's school in Enneagram Egypt. And so this idea of like mentoring newer teachers and, and listening for what is your facet of truth that you are called to teach right what is right and th that's authentic to you right because we don't need to teach every bit of it right and in fact it would be probably inauthentic like this idea of our purpose or our calling being this nuance of like what's what's true for us to teach right yeah so it sounds that's like that right. what your life path has been for you you are now passing on you right so true exactly and when they enter, it's a year long program. And when they enter, they're pretty good presenters. Mm -hmm. And when they leave the, the program, they're pretty good teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, so really interesting. And the other thing I heard you talking about here sounds like, you know, there's, uh, I, I know from my Asian culture, there is a great respect for the elders, right? And you know, when I was a kid, I was, I was a kind of difficult child. But I'd be like, just because they're old, I mean, but like, you know, <laughs> well, not everyone gets wise because they get old, but some do. So true. So you know, <laughs> it was like, so that that was my initial response. But but I get it in general that I but I want to make sure I understand everything you were saying. You know, that my understanding of what you're saying is just that there was an era of greater connection, you know, when you're talking about around the fire, right? The, 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 the village and the tribe and the gathering of stories passed down through generations. So we are not reinventing the wheel, that there is wisdom that is passed down from some of the wise people. <laughs> 
that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, not just the old people, maybe the wise people. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know there are you know village elders right you not everyone gets to be a village elder but you know <laughs> but you usually have to have lived some and that idea yeah. you know of having lived some and so yeah. so yeah go ahead go ahead did you want to yeah yeah exactly so it's it's hmm when the topic is spirituality i think spirituality is a way of connecting to part of the truth and it's up for us to not just hear about it read about it take notes about it it's about integrating it and see is that really, really true? So, the the journey I have started with my girlfriend Louisa. I had the sense that this was also a spiritual journey. That she could grow individually, I could grow individually. And we could grow together. Still, in the beginning, it was just words and a beautiful picture of love. <laughs> but you have to do the work, fight with it, struggle with it to see, yeah, it's true. It's true. When you found someone that you want to spend your private life with, and build a house and build a garden and create families. It is true that together something is there in that, in that connection that is not there with my friends or my family. No, it, it's very unique. And we have heard about it. All the poets for a thousand of years have talked about that magical thing that can be between men and, and, and woman. But if you don't go there and emerge yourself in it, and it can be through therapy or workshop or courses or retreats or whatever, and, and, and make experiments about what is it actually they are talking about in the books, mm -hmm. then it would just be somebody's poetry right but it has to be our poetry it has to be our words it has to be our kids never do what we tell them to do they, they only do what they see us doing so so when when louise and i are trying to be as real as possible together then that can kind of impact we can transmit a little bit or to people around us sometimes to our children but that happens so seldom that they want to do exactly what mom and papa is doing uh, but people around so i can today speak of love in another way that i have been capable of doing in other relationships and I can today talk about friendships in a different way than I could before and building businesses. And a lot of domains, I can now speak from a lift experience. Yes. Instead about talking about things like in the books. Yes. Yes. I have a phrase that I call um, ka karaoke teachers. <laughs> you know, teachers that are just telling what they teacher said. Right. It's like the, the podcast is playing in the background and then they're just kind of mimicking to what yeah. the teacher is saying. But it's not in here. It's not coming from them. Yes. They're presenting stuff. 
but when we are transmitting or sharing stuff, it's um, it's lived. It's a lived experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And most threes would say, "Hey, my life is about a lived experience. <laughs> I'm all out there. I do. I live. Mm-mm. Yeah." But are you there? Like the the realness, is it here? That yeah. has been a lesson for me. Yeah. yeah, 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 very powerful. A lesson that has um, permeated all areas of your life, it sounds like. You know, that journey inward that began with almost like a career purpose, that moved into an inner world where then this presence and this awareness and this interiority that you've begun to cultivate more um, mm. seems to actually have, I mean, I know for many threes, it's not that we think that we're living on the surface. It feels like life until you know better, right? Yeah until you go past the gate and you're like, oh, this is actually the fuller territory. And this is yeah. what you mean. And this is what you you say, living beyond ideas. You know, what I was hearing is almost like living beyond your concept or your idea, your ideals of the situation, right? Your idea of romance, right? You're, you know, an actual romance, <laughs> like actual yeah, love, right? But yeah. A good way of putting it. And that's, where the cheating myself comes from. Mm-hmm. Hey, I've been living in, I don't know even what to call it, but I've living in something that, yeah, was doable, manageable, easy, fixable, but I was not there. My structures were there. My capabilities were there. My smartness was there, but nobody owned. But nobody home. Yeah, 100%. It's amazing what threes can accomplish with, with nobody yeah. home. <laughs> so, you know, and, and you know, <laughs> but I want to say that for me, when you said this phrase that you keep repeating, which I, th- I think is very resonant for me, that I, I was cheating. I was cheating. And, you know, it's only a very, very low level three that cheats other people. The average three, we cheat ourselves. And, yeah, and, and so, true right? The passion or vice of the type, for, especially for those of you who are new and are listening, it is deceit. But usually what it is, is self-deceit. Like you, we buy into our own story of our lives, right? Yeah. And not knowing, yeah. really genuinely not knowing. And I think our society may not have as much compassion for it because threes do so well in the outer. You're like, you don't need our compassion. Right? <laughs> but like, it's equally painful right as it is for any type to live in fixation and so what you're talking when you were talking about cheating yourself that's what i was hearing the the path from the vice of the type which is the emotional habit of of deceit moving into the virtue of the type which is authenticity right and it's again it's not about like an outer authenticity oh yeah well i said what i thought no like for, like as i understand it when you talk about that connected heart it's about from what i really actually want in here in yeah. here like do i actually like this like to actually it's a deeper you know i said that journey from me to we but in some ways it's also the journey into like the real me because that yeah. that blown up me on the outside needs a lot of stuff to prove its worth you know when instead entering into that hollowness that emptiness you described earlier where the me like oh there I am and now I can be with you because I'm with me you know that's that's kind of what I heard beautiful said yeah absolutely yeah yeah and it's it's interesting it 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 goes in circle so the moment I tell myself, now I got it. <laughs> I totally understand. I'm, I'm here. I'm so far from being here. Yeah. That, that recognition of, I think I understand what it is to be connected to my heart. 
but the moment I I think I can explain it, yeah. I'm not here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a um, it's a um, it, it's it's it happens often often for me when I'm in nature. Mm -hmm. I have a podcast where I record. It's a pilgrim's podcast, so I record uh, an hour a day when I'm out walking every day. And first, it takes me 30 minutes to kind of get in the mood on, hey, it's like I have to catch up with myself. Yeah. Yes. So I have to kind of walk slowly enough so so me can be here or, or the soul can be here. And then I just speak on whatever is here. But I do it in nature, in, in, in the woods that is just here, close by. Mm -hmm. And it's like the pace of time in nature, I call it nature time, Right. goes that slowly that I'm reminded that I have to be that slowly because all this is just nature. So when, when I'm... I'm when in nature time, it's like I can uh, all all the me's can whoops be here, yes. and then then we can hang out and we can agree. Hey, it's a little complicated with all all the me's <laughs> here, but uh, let's let's just stay with that and give every one of them a voice. So all the achieving things, I just want to go there. The ego me, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not talking you down, you're part of me, but there's also the very spiritual me that I meet in, in long silent retreats. All of them are here. Mm -hmm. And when I can embrace it all and not judge myself, then I can speak clearer from my heart. Beautiful. Beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, you know, and when you, you shared about the way that you were being, being with yourself in nature, I flash back to your mention of your shift with your son, where, I mean, even threes, like we can like want to fix self-improvement project, right? In ourselves, the fixing of ourselves versus the word you used earlier was witnessing, like this witnessing presence for him. And it sounds like you're doing it for yourself with yourself right with all parts of yourself best you can i appreciate the humility as well and i think just the the honesty about like and it's cyclical like this journey you know that like it's not like one and done as many threes you know if you're a three and listening like sorry mm -hmm. here's the, here's the news you know kind of like right? You know, it's not one and done. But then if you like the journey, you don't need it to be either one and done, right? Yeah, it's not a project. Yes, it's not a project, you know, so for sure. Hey, so as we close our time together, you know, especially for, I know this is going to benefit anyone listening, but especially for the three who is newer to the journey, you know, of like, oh, can I really let go of these outer things, et cetera? You know, what counsel might you have around, you know, this journey into a more spiritual or in inner world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is coming from my Zen Buddhist training, but the neutral observing has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So seeing everything that I do, there's a lot of doing, but also seeing or witnessing all my thoughts, all my good ideas that I want to implement right now, and also whatever is going on emotionally, when I observe them, Maybe in the beginning, I will um, kind of be proud of how achievable and masterful and winning I am. And then witness that one day there might be a shift. Because I think we need a little courage from others to feel courage ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think we need a little love from others to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think we need a little forgiveness 
for others to forgive ourselves. So, so very often it comes from the outer perimeter that that we are invited to see ourselves, not the patterns, but our essence or what we really are. So if I have practiced the neutral of serving, mm -hmm. then it's easier for me to include more and more of this new stuff that is, uh, okay, people do not like me for all my achievements. They kind of just like me. <laughs> what? <laughs> that kind of aha moment, just stay with it, observe it and say, hey, invite it in, because in the end, I think that we should consciously be able to set in motion what is needed. And when it's needed to go out there and act and do and get money to get a house for the family, go do that. And when you have to stay with your child with presence and witness them, Go do that. But we have to see when people are giving us a little courage, a little love, a little self-forgiveness, we have to be ready to make that do its work in us. So the neutral observing, like neutral means without judgment, that will prepare. To that day, it happens. Because it's not a project. It's not that we can do this and that and then we're there. No. That, that courage, love, forgiveness comes from, yeah, sources that we have no idea that mm. we are. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Fleming. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And as we c close our time together, uh, I would love to know if you have a, uh, a pop, a quote, a favorite quote or poem. I do. Saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You told me to, so <laughs> invited. So, that is <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Yeah. You told me do it or and and a lot of well hearts I see. Okay. Hearts dancing in the hearts. Go do. <laughs> I mean, you know. I'm just joking here. I'm joking. <laughs> well, I can read it for you if you want to. Yes, of course. Okay, it goes like this. The title is singing the song of others mm. a bright solitary songbird sings in the dark night of the forest singing the song of others in the starry night silence with no other soul around to listen the melody resonates giving life to songs of those with fear, vulnerability, sorrow, illness, singing the song of others. Um, and you only gave me two hours to write it, so it's a little long. Oh, you wrote it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's yours? Oh. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, Thank that was the Thank you. No, the task. it didn't have to be. You could have someone else's. <laughs> ah, okay. That's amazing though. I it's, it's so beautiful and precious. And uh yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh and I hope everyone listening, yeah, takes an opportunity to listen to this, not necessarily on two times speed. You might want to slow it down and check with your heart make sure all parts of you are listening as we as we uh, you know join here together in this relational space right yeah so thank you everyone and stay tuned for the next episode see you and Bye. thank you thank you Nian, for singing the song of others thank you thank you i will see you soon in person see in you San soon bye-bye